Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Your Excellency Musa Faki, the chairperson of the AU, who has really uh, captured all the protocols here that I wish to adopt. Ladies and gentlemen, may I take this opportunity to welcome you all to Kisumu County and Kisumu City and to join my brother, Professor Anyangnyong, the governor of this great county who has welcomed you here and with whom I'm the co-host. And I want to say that I have a very long speech here, but my role really was just to welcome you all and to welcome His Excellency the President to speak to you. But I noticed uh, when my Muna was speaking, there was a lot of excitement when she talked about the possibility of having a woman president someday. And my guests sitting next to me were asking me, why are people so excited in Kenya? So I was saying, uh, if you are Kenyan, I would have asked you, are you strangers in Jerusalem? Because yesterday something uh, historical happened in our country. And Your Excellency Musa Faki, you are a special envoy uh, for infrastructure, the Right Honorable Raila Odinga nominated a woman known as Martha Karua to be the next Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. <laughs> that informs you why there's so much excitement in Kenya today. Then, apart from Maimuna, as she was speaking, I noticed a lot of excitement again when uh, Amina Mohammed, Her Excellency, the Deputy Secretary General, spoke about intermediary cities and urban centers uh, being uh, the engines of economic transformation of Africa, of growing uh, 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 Africa from the bottom up. So someone asked me, why are people excited about that? Because we have an election coming around the corner when you speak about bottom up, you might, it might mean something very different. But I don't think that is what Amina Mohammed meant. She was saying the true meaning of bottom-up is devolution. It's bringing more resources down to our counties, to our subnational governments, and turning them into engines of socioeconomic transformation of our country and our counties. And under the leadership of President Uhuru Kenyatta, that is what we have been doing in Kenya for the last 10 years. And we want to welcome you so that we share with you our experience in devolution and in decentralization. And that is what we'll be doing in the course of today. But I just wanted to also welcome you to Kisumu as a city that has great history. Many of you, maybe for the first time, you are coming to this beautiful Lakeside city and you're wondering where it has been all this time. Because in Africa, We've been looking at our capital cities. Kenya was honored in 2006 to host Afri cities, but that was in Nairobi. And we've been to the other capitals of uh, Africa where we've held Afri cities. And we are very grateful to UCLGA for giving us the opportunity as Kenya, as Kisumu with uh, Professor Nyangnyong, to be the first intermediary city in Africa to host Afri cities. The scripture said, who much is given, much is expected. Indeed, you put our, you, your faith in us, but you also gave us a lot of responsibility. And we know much is expected of us. And I must thank all those we've worked together to ensure that this day is a success. And I must thank, starting with our Professor Nyongo and his team, you have done well, Prof. If I was a voter in Kisumu, I would have said, teach Tire Tano Ten. You have done extremely well. But my colleagues in national government, in cabinet, I must thank you because we have walked a long way under the leadership of our president to make this a success. And I want to single out my colleague C.S. Masharia, with whom we have worked, with his PSS in charge of housing, P.S. Hinga, with the PSS in charge of uh, uh, roads, P 
PS is in charge of uh, transport to expand our airport here, to do our roads, and to make this day a success. I must also thank my PS, Korir. I think he's here with us. We've done a wonderful, wonderful job with our devolution team to make this day a success. And before I invite His Excellency the President, just to give you a little history about Kisumu. This city has a great history, like other cities in Africa, in Europe, and across the world. It has a long history that stretches back to the Victorian era. We had two Englishmen who came here in 1858, Speak and Barton, and they said they had discovered Lake Victoria, and they named it after their queen. Before they came, the community living here, the Luo community, called Lake Victoria Namlolwe. The Luyas lived here, they called it Enyanja Yawalude. When you go to the Rwandese, they call the lake Enyanza. But Speak and Barton came and said they were the first people to discover Lake Victoria, and they named it after their queen. That is how Lake Victoria came to be. The second thing that happened was the British now came in to open up the hinterland of Africa to connect the port of Mombasa and the port of Kisumu. And this is one lesson we want to take away as Africa, the importance of infrastructure in developing intermediary cities, in growing intermediary cities. Indeed, Kisumu grew as an accident, and it came out of a huge debate in the British Parliament when Henry Loberloch said, call this a gigantic folly. Building a train from Mombasa to Kisumu looked like an impossibility then. In 1896, they started. And the, it was opposed by the British Parliament. But it went on through a lot of challenges. Winston Churchill came and said, it, this was not a folly. In fact, it was a brilliant conception. And it was an art of the British uh, tradition of muddling through things. So they muddled through a lot of uh, politics back home to get on the ground. There were lions who were man eaters in Savo. They muddled through the Savo. They had, a lock, they had a sesafly attacks, a lot of disease. They muddled through it. They went through ravines, valleys, faced the Maasai warriors, very fierce Nandi warriors. But they muddled through it, and by 1901, they arrived here in Kisumu. It was then called Port Florence. As we speak today, this is one of the most transformative infrastructural developments in Africa. We are happy that after our president took over, we have continued to invest as national government in this infrastructure. We have a standard gauge railway that has been built during this administration. All the way from Mombasa, it's now in Naivasha. It will come to Kisumu. We know that it was not easy to do that, but again, we are transforming this city because of that infrastructure. Investing in ports, as Musa Faki has said, it's about ports, it's about roads, it's about the rail, it's about infra water infrastructure. And this is one lesson we want to take away as we look at the future of intermediary cities in our, account, in our continent to transform it. So I want to thank you. There will be many sessions where we want to share experiences about our journey in devolution, about the success of decentralization in this country. There are many breakaway sessions. There are many delegations that we have engaged. Please take your time. Let us engage, share experiences, and learn from each other. Let us also look at how we can look at the challenges facing us, how we can overcome these challenges, and how we can address the vulnerabilities that are going to face our populations as they move into their cities. Experts are saying by 2050, we'll have over 60% of our populations in these intermediary cities. So we must prepare for that. And the role of intermediary cities in realization of the AU Agenda 2063 and the EU Agenda 2030 is at the center of our discussions today. Please let us share, but also take time to enjoy the beautiful lake out there, Lake Victoria. It's the biggest tropical lake in Africa and the second largest freshwater lake in the world after Lake Superior. 
take your time and enjoy our, hospita our hospitality. And it's now my pleasure and honor to invite His Excellency the President to address us. Welcome, Your Excellency.